So we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 22. The chapter is entitled The Marriage of Kardama Muni and Devahuti. This is text number 5. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om. Tava Sadarsana Eva. Tava Sadarsana Eva. Chintame Sarva Samsaya. Chinnamme Sarva Samsaya. Yatswayam Bhagavan Pritya. Yatswayam Bhagavan Pritya. Dharma Aha Viraksi Saho. Dharma Aha Viraksi Saho. Tava Sadarsana Eva. Chintame Sarva Samsaya. Yatswayam Bhagavan Pritya. Dharma Aha Riraksi Saho. Tava Sadarsana Eva. Chinnamme Sarva Samsaya. Yatswayam Bhagavan Pritya. Dharma Aha Viraksi Saho. Ladies, Anyone else? <laughs> Tava, your Sadarsanat by sight, Eva, only, Chinna, resolved, May, my, Sarva Samsayaha, all doubts, yet, inasmuch as, Swayam, personally, Bhagavan, your Lordship, 
pritya, lovingly, dharmam, duty, aha, explained, ririksha sisaho, of a king anxious to protect his subjects. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. This is Manu speaking. Now I have resolved all my doubts simply by meeting you. For your Lordship has very kindly and clearly explained the duty of a king who desires to protect his subjects. Please repeat. Now I have resolved all my doubts simply by meeting you. For your Lordship has very kindly and clearly explained the duty of a king who desires to protect his subjects. Purport. Mano described herewith the result of seeing a great saintly person. Lord Chaitanya says that one should always try to associate with saintly persons. Because if one establishes a proper association with a saintly person, even for a moment one attains all perfection. Somehow or other, if one meets a saintly person and achieves his favor, then the entire mission of human life is fulfilled. Now, Prabhupada's speaking about himself now. In our personal experience, we have actual proof of this statement of Manu. Once, we had the opportunity to meet Vishnupad Sri Sriman Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj. And on first sight, he requested this humble self to preach his message in the Western countries. There was no preparation for this, but somehow or other he desired it. And by his grace, we are now engaging in executing his order, which has given us a transcendental occupation and has saved and liberated us from the occupation of material activities. Thus, it is actually a fact that if one meets a saintly person completely engaged in transcendental duties and achieves his favor, then one's life mission becomes complete. This next statement is really interesting. What is not power possible to achieve in thousands of lives can be achieved in one moment if there is an opportunity to meet a saintly person. It is therefore enjoined in Vedic literature that one should always try to associate with saintly persons and try to disassociate oneself from the common man because by one word of a saintly person one can be liberated from his material entanglement. A saintly person has the power because of his spiritual advancement to give immediate liberation to the conditioned soul. Here, Manu admits that all his doubts are now over because Kardama has very kindly described the different duties of individual souls. Om Ajnan Timirandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilita Miena Tasmai Sri Gudavena Maha Sri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapita Miena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadanti Swam Padanti Kam Jaya Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara, Sri Vasudhi Gauda Bhaktivindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So Mano is speaking, he has just had the very saintly association in Darshan of Kardama Muni. Mano is a great soul. And he is the empowered by the Lord to rule the universe. And he is worshipped in his own kingdom in a very glorious way. It's described in previous verses how when he returns to his kingdom how much he is welcomed and honored by the persons within his kingdom and how much he engages in devotional service to the Lord. But here, he is speaking like practically like an ordinary person. He's had the association of Kardama Muni, who is you know, completely free from all material attachments and desires. 
And by that association, he says, all my doubts have been destroyed. And Prabhupada goes on to explain how that w just one moment's association with a certain saintly person, one's fulfillment of all endeavors in all one's lives, all of one's desires can be fully fulfilled and achieved simply by one moment association. Saru Sangha, Saru Sangha Sarva Sastri Hoi, Lava Mata, Saru Sangha Sarva Siddhi Hoi. But that one moment association, the word Lava Mata is mentioned within that verse. And Srila Prabhupada explains that Lava Mata means one eleventh of a second. So not even a moment, but a moment divided into eleven. One of those. How powerful. One time Prabhupada was discussing this verse and some devotees were asking him, Well, Srila Prabhupada, you know, we've had your association and we continue to get your association, but we can see within ourselves we are not purified, we still have attachments, we still have desires, we still have so many conditioned aspects to our life. So can you explain what does that mean, this verse? And Prabhupada explained. An interesting explanation he gave. He said that that when the wood is wet, it doesn't light. But the wood has to dry out. And as soon as the wood dries out, then immediately there is fire. So he meant that one has to be in that consciousness to accept the full mercy of the spiritual master, and then immediately there is purification. So, Prabhupada was ex explaining that one has to continue to associate in here for a long time, and then at one point, then one will become fully purified by that association. But, the power of that associate can, cannot be estimate, underestimated. It's explaining that when you want to make a point, you use an analogy. An analogy helps to make a comparison between something that is similar in points. But here, no analogy can be given. And this is a Shastric statement that nothing can be compared to the association of a great soul. Not all of one's riches, one's intelligence, elevation to the higher planets, one's austerities, nothing can be compared. Even one's endeavor uh, to engage in devotional service unless one gets the mercy and the association of the saintly persons. That's how valuable it is. It's described in the scriptures that this association is the tender creeper of the root of the bhakti tree. And when that tender creeper is nourished nicely, the bhakti tree grows. And we can see within our own lives, probably many of you have had the association of Srila Prabhupada or association of Srila Prabhupada's devotees. And simply by that association, your whole life changes. Within a moment, all of a sudden, there is a, a realization about the goal of life, the purpose of life, simply by that association. When Prabhupada was was in 26 Second Avenue in the old days, 1966. And Janaki, Janaki was one of the first devotees. And she was about to get married to Mukunda. It was probably the first marriage that was being performed in the Hare Krishna movement. And Janaki invited her sister Jan, who later became initiated as Jamuna. And when she came, Prabhupada engaged her in cooking and taught her how to cook. Now, she came simply for the association of the marriage. Her sister encouraged her and says, My spiritual master, please come to my marriage. So she came. And upon meeting Prabhupada and having his association, she immediately, her whole life changed. She gave up everything and joined the Hare Krishna movement. How powerful Prabhupada's association was. And we see that in many cases. Just by that one moment's association, 
everything else doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But to appreciate that association means to be in the proper consciousness. Because it's explained that a flea can sit on a king, but is the flea actually associating with the king? What does the king have to do with the flea? What the flea has to do with the king, really, there is no connection. Although, in physical proximity, they're together. So, of course, even in that association, there is benefit. But the consciousness that is conducive to taking advantage of that association is fundamental to getting the actual benefit. And what is that consciousness? That one has to be in the, in the mood of service. One has to be in the mood of service. Not to enjoy the association. Prabhupada used to say, don't try to enjoy your spiritual master. But try to be in that consciousness that when in that association, how can I serve? And of course, to hear submissively the words from a pure devotee is actually the greatest of all service. Because by that, by that hearing, in the proper consciousness, then that, those words can free one from material attachments and inspire one to surrender their life in devotion and service. So we aspire for that association in the proper mood. But in order to be in that proper consciousness, one has to have the proper, what we say, I don't know what the word is, adhikari, or qualifications. And what is the qualification? That is an eagerness, the intense eagerness. And that is the price of Krishna consciousness. And in that association, I want to hear, I want to, I want to serve, I want to learn. I want to become free from my material desires and my material attachments. Unless there's a conscious endeavor to purify the heart, then all, even though the association of saintly persons is there, there of course there is always benefit. We can never un un underestimate that association. But without that proper consciousness, then it becomes very much difficult. And because we can see how also many persons had the association of Srila Prabhupada, but somehow left the society of devotees. Because they, maybe for different reasons, and we cannot you know, say there is one particular reason or another, but somehow or other the mood of association was not, when we say, focused on what is the purpose of that association. And what is the purpose of that association is to hear and to read the service. Tadvidi pratipatene paripasyena sevaya upateksyanti te gyanam gyaninas tadvadarsinaham. That submissive oil, submissive choir, and the desire to, re to serve is actually the basis of that association. That service attitude, when the service attitude is strong, then the words of the spiritual master awaken within that person transcendental knowledge simply by that, by that, uh, by that hearing of that, those words. Yasya bhakti vata, what is it? Yasya devi prabha bhakti vata devi tata guru tasyaifa kartita dhyartan prakasanati mahatmanaha. That one who has implicit faith, now the word doesn't say faith, but implicit, that means faith without any other considerations. And faith is tested. We see within our Krishna consciousness. Our faith in our, in our spiritual life is tested by circumstances. Sometimes when we get sick and we're not able to perform our devotional service, it becomes difficult. Our faith is tested. Why is Krishna putting me in these difficult circumstances? Or somehow or other when we, in, when we engage in our devotional service and our service is not appreciated or not accepted, Sometimes we lose some enthusiasm if we lose our faith. Or sometimes there are some reverses. And sometimes Krishna changes our services. Uh, but if we remain faithful throughout all these, what we say, changes, 
apparently in the way things happen, but remain steady and fixed at the lotus feet of the spiritual master. And remaining lotus fixed at the spiritual master really means to be absorbed in the instructions of the spiritual master. Because the spiritual master's instructions are non different than the association of the spiritual master. That is a very important point to remember. That association, in the real sense of the term, in the complete sense, is to meditate on the instructions of the spiritual master. And as Prabhupada says, meditation on the instructions of the spiritual master is tantamount to seeing the Supreme Personality of Godhead face to face. So this association of the spiritual master or the great souls brings about the process of hearing. And through the process of hearing, the process of awakening the desire to serve. And through that process of serving and absorbing ourselves in that service and in the instructions of the spiritual master, one becomes purified. But Lord Chaitanya explains that in order to continue, one must very carefully give up the association of materialistic person. When Sanatana Goswami asked Lord Chaitanya, what is the first duty of a devotee in devotional service? What is the first duty of a Vaishnava? He said, Asad Sangha Etiaga E Vaishnava Achar. That one has to give up the association of persons to, who are attached to the material energy. In other words, persons who are engaged in sense gratification. Because by that association, one becomes contaminated. Actually, that is the process of fall down. The process of fall down is explained that when one starts to pick and choose the instructions of the spiritual master and take what they like and what they don't like and then becomes somewhat what we say critical of others engaged in devotional service and then one starts to find association of non-devotees. That's the process of fall down. So one has to be very, very careful to follow the instructions very carefully and keep association with devotees. Association with devotees is the foundation for all our success in devotional service. Because Krishna and the spiritual master works through the association of devotees to purify our hearts, to keep us focused on devotional service. That association is valuable. Therefore, it is mentioned in the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam that the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, the holy name of the Lord, and association of Vaishnava is the sum and substance of the process of devotional service. Because in that association, the spiritual master's instructions become what we say prominent in our life. Therefore, we should always keep very strict very strict association with Vaishnavas. And again, the equality of that association is how much we benefit in the process of devotional service. What is that quality of association? The mood of service. This is foundational to association. Always be in the mood of service. Because without being in the mood of service, if we're in the mood of enjoyment or in some other mood, we can't really appreciate the mood of, sir, of uh, we can't appreciate the association of Vaishnavas. Therefore, we hear from Vaishnavas, we serve Vaishnavas, we appreciate that and the Vaishnavas, and we learn from the Vaishnavas. And the spiritual master, Shri Radha Madhava Kija, the spiritual master and the supreme lord, purify the hearts of the devotee through the association. Of this great of the devotees. So here it emphasizes, of course, and Srila Prabhupada uses his own example in his own life. It's interesting how he he makes this point. How within his own life he took this as an opportunity to explain how powerful saintly association was. Of course, we all know the story how Srila Prabhupada was encouraged by his friend Narendranath Mulak to come and meet Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and Prabhupada was somewhat reluctant at the time to go having had association with what he felt were saintly persons 
but not really saintly persons. When his, fa his father, Gor Mohan Day, would always be hosting traveling sadhus. And Srila Prabhupada used to say, I wasn't so much impressed by the quality of their, these sadhus. So Prabhupada never really, I mean, he understood what a saintly person was. But when he was encouraged to meet another saintly person, he was a little reluctant. But Nandranath Mulik was very determined to bring Prabhupada. And then he came to meet Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And upon seeing Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he immediately offered his humble obeisances. And even before he gave up, came up, of course we all know the story, but it's so glorious because that, that moment is actually the beginning of the Hare Krishna movement. <laughs> it's actually the beginning because Prabhupada heard from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta the immortal words of bringing Krishna consciousness to the Western countries. Therefore, he said, you are a very intelligent man. You should take this mission of Lord Chaitanya and bring it to the Western world. And, of course, Srila Prabhupada describes how, at that time, he was in the Gandhian movement and was thinking that it's a very nice idea, and I agree in principle, but practically it is not, cannot be carried out because we are still a dependent country. We are still under British Raj, and therefore we need to have Swaraj. We need liberation from the British, and then we can speak about these things. The Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati immediately said, no. No, this political party, that political party, this situation, that situation. And these things are all within the course of time, and things will never change. So the time for spreading Krishna consciousness is always now. And Prabhupada was convinced. And after that meeting, he took within his heart that association in the words of his spiritual master, which carried him through all the difficulties, trials, and tribulations that he encountered in bringing Krishna consciousness to the entire world. So how powerful was that association? And how qualified was Srila Prabhupada to receive that association? But that qualification is there. That is simply if one is, has that desire to purify their life, to become Krishna conscious, then simply by that association with a great soul that awakens within one's heart the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That's how powerful this saintly association is. So therefore, when the analogy is presented, is that can this be compared to anything? The ultimately, it is explained that there is no analogy and there is no comparison to the association of, the, of a great soul. Because ultimately, that is, the, that is the foundation which leads to the perfection of our life, fully Krishna conscious. So we can see, by this uh, particular verse here, how Manu... He's such a powerful personality, and he's greatly appreciating the association of Kardama Muni. And, of course, again, this point that I would like to always mention, the mood of service is really the essence of that association. Because it's explained in Srimad Bhagavatam, Susru Shrasharadamasya Vasudeva Kataruchi, that by serving great souls, great service is done. And by such service, one gets an affinity to hear the glories of the Lord. Satam prasangam mamavirya sambido bhavanti hit karna rasayana kata. That the discussion of the glories of the Lord in the association of the great souls is actually the perfection of spiritual life. In other words, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, to get that eagerness, to get that desire, that enthusiasm to hear and chant the glories of the Lord comes by association and service of great souls. It comes by association. But then again, the other side, one has to be very, very careful that in that association, one acts, what we say, in the proper consciousness, proper mood.
one has to be careful not to commit offenses. Because as the great as there is great benefit, there is also, when we say, danger. The danger is that one commits offenses and that by that offenses one's spiritual life becomes blocked, at least temporarily, until those offenses are removed. So therefore to to associate with the great souls which means to hear from them to serve them and also, also we see here after hearing from Kardama Muni he's not simply going away he's glorifying Kardama Muni he's thanking him he's offering his, his heartfelt appreciation that by your association which is so glorious that I have become free from all my doubts. And you have clearly explained my duty as a king. He knows his duty as a king. But still, he comes to hear to from a great soul, thinking himself unqualified. So, we see from this association how powerful it is. But then again, of course, one has to be very careful not to commit offenses. So the mood of uh, the mood of avoiding offenses or not taking appreciate not getting the appreciation of that service is to always be in the mood of submissive oral reception and with the desire to serve and with the desire not only the desire to serve but a desire to please by service. This is very important to understand that not only do we want to serve, we want to please by our service. Because we can do service, and service is really the, what we do. But the desire to please in that process of service is really the essence of bhakti. That let me serve, but let me serve to please you, to satisfy you, to reciprocate the mercy you have given me. So that is Krishna consciousness. So this is a very, very essential point that's being made here. And... Srila Prabhupada sees it so valuable that he uses his own life example to make the point clear. To make this point very clear. Okay, so we have to end at a certain time. Are there any questions? Any comments? Yes. Maharaj Hare Krishna. To doing, uh, in other words, welfare work by bringing people's material needs in, in a disaster circumstance. Mm. You know, that was a controversial debate I noticed in uh, many years ago. There was this discussion that was going on with uh, our Food for Life program. That we're traveling in different parts of the world and bringing food. And someone was saying, well... It is if we bring them Krishna consciousness, but if we just bring them just food and just material things, then how can we say that it is actually devotional service? Um, we have to actually estimate and see. A devotee is by nature, um, Prabhupada explains that when a devotee sees others suffering, they also suffer. We feel bad. I was I was just recently in Mumbai, and I was there during the attacks. And uh, we were at one program. We actually couldn't go out of the house because of the attacks after the program. And you know we were watching the news and we were seeing you know how many people were being killed, and it was just really horrible to see. And for a devotee. You know, we don't say, well, you know, that's their karma or that's too bad, it's the unfortunate circumstance. A devotee actually, actually feels suffering. We also, not suffering like they're suffering, but we feel compassion. We feel sorry for that. 
But to relieve a person's suffering, we understand the best way is to present Krishna consciousness. So if we can go into an area that is devastated by some kind of natural disaster or to bring some medical aid, but at the same time, because we're devotees, we can also bring Krishna consciousness into that area. But we shouldn't be chasing every c c c catastrophe everywhere because there are so many. They're always going on constantly. I think we have to discriminate. Just like our doctors in Mumbai, the devotees in Chaupati, they do the eye camp every year in Barsana. So all of the major doctors go to Barsana and they stay for one week and they give free um, operations to remove people's cataracts to the Brijabhasis. But while we're there, we're giving out prasadam, we're also teaching people to chant Hare Krishna, like that. Does that help? Dr. Rupa Prabhu? Yeah. You were describing how association by association of devotees, one has a desire to increase his hearing and chanting. Yeah. But it's also, isn't it also described that if you don't actually have a desire to associate with sadhus, but somehow or other you chant Hare Krishna, you can develop, that de desire will develop? Isn't it, so isn't it both sides there? Yeah, they're kind of reciprocal. <laughs> it's like what comes first, you know. <laughs> There's obviously some hearing and chanting will also inspire one to associate, but then again, in that association, the inspiration for hearing and chanting increases. So it's like back and forth. After say, if we don't take uh, you know, regular association with devotees, we could also become, what we say, a little less enthusiastic or more mechanical in our hearing and chanting. But then again, when the association comes, then again, we're inspired by that. So yeah, it's, it's, you're correct. It's like back and forth like that. Yes, Prabhu. So you say that also the proper association is in the mood of service, serving Vaishnavas. Yeah. And the whole meaning of chanting Hare Krishna Mantra, as in Chaitanya Bhagavata says, Vrindavan Dasakur, Nama Ruchi and Vaishnava Seva. He probably giving the, himself the example in the purpose you read. But the point is that that service to Vaishnavas and to Krishna should be do in a favorable way because should Rupa be Goswami should, should be, be performed in a favorable way to please Krishna. That's why yeah. he says, Sarva Padi Vinit Muktan Tad Ekena Dhan Malam Rishikena Rishikesha Sevanam Bhakti Vishate. In other words, to please Krishna, no? to do what service we want whimsically. Yeah, that's Bhakti. Ayabila Sita Sunyam Gyana Kamarana Vrita Manukulena Krishna Silanam. Anukulena Krishna Silanam means that devotional service has to be in relationship to Krishna with a desire to please Krishna. And to serve his devotees is the greatest service. Krishna says that many times. You know, the, he who says he's my devotee is not my devotee, but who he says he's a devotee of my devotee is actually my devotee. So serving Vaishnavas, Lord Shiva explains, Aradhanam Sarvesham, that he's speaking to... Uh, um, sati, and he's explaining that the highest service is to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu. But higher than that, to Dhyanam, is to serve those things in relationship to the Lord. So serving Vaishnavas is, is actually to Dhyanam, serving things in relationship to the Lord. So that's higher than serving the Lord. Yeah, thank you. Nice point. Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj. One of the points that you clarify regarding Srila Prabhupada's approaching a sadhu, in this case Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, was his natural power of discrimination. Natural power of? The, of discrimination. Discrimination. Because, because he already had this great birth, being also associated with his father as a pure devotee. Mm. So, also you stress this power of discrimination on how a society should interact with a greater society, our society of Krishna consciousness, where we had to use also power of discrimination regarding 
how to help others because this is not just a welfare charity society but transcendental society so the question is regarding newcomers that come to Krishna consciousness and if the principle of uh, power discrimination is so uh, vital we don't have technically a big sanskara to be able to discriminate who is a sadhu and who is not. So eventually... Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Though eventually... I'll tell one story. Someone came to Prabhupada and said, Prabhupada, you know, we have... This was in India. He, some man said, Prabhupada, you know, we have so many sadhus here, we have so many saintly persons, but we have so many problems. Prabhupada said, the problem is you don't know who a saintly person is. <laughs> that's your problem. So, you know, and people are expert. I mean, it's an occupation to be a saintly person in India. <laughs> you know, sometimes people use that as an opportunity to take advantage of others. And Prabhupada says that sometimes, you know, ladies go to holy places in order to meet sadhus, to, to meet nice husbands. But then an unscrupulous men, they dress up as sadhus so they can meet these ladies so everybody loses <laughs> so what can you say so how do you understand a saintly person by two things by his words and by really by his, uh, his service what is he doing not only by his words but what is his activities now sometimes people can speak very well, we say convincingly and very also very devotionally but then you examine what are their activities so to, to understand who a saintly person is may not be so easy therefore it may take some time to associate and to observe and Prabhupada also talks about the process of initiation he explains that when one, one aspires for initiation they should observe their prospective spiritual master for a year and see if this is the person I want to actually give my life to and take shelter of. So there's a, what we say, a trial period of examination to understand. And therefore, one should have some preliminary knowledge what is the saintly person. Therefore, we have to read the scriptures, we have to hear what are the qualifications and activities of a saintly person. So it may not be so easy. It may not be so easy. Any other questions? Lakshmi Moni, would you like to say something? You always have many realizations. Please say something. I was just thinking when Bhakti Prabhu made his comment, um, <clears throat> made his comment that just the fact that someone is chanting Hare Krishna means they've come somehow in contact with a saintly person, or at least Mahaprabhu's instruction. Yeah. So yeah. they've already had some agyata sukriti, something has come in, and then it goes cyclically after that. So that was my first thought. And I had a question for you, but it's not an... Uh, it's something you said no. a while ago, and I forgot. And you once said that there was something to always remember. Get and, and two, two things uh, to always remember. Yeah, you and want I me to read them, so I need to know what they are. Two things you should always forget, and two things you should always remember. So, this was spoken by someone from the Ramanuja Sampradaya. Two things you should always forget. You should forget all the bad things that others have done for, to you. And you should forget all the good things that you did for others. And the first one you might be a little easy, but the second one's a little harder. <laughs> a lot harder. <laughs> Maybe impossible. <laughs> it's because that way, of course, the principle is to re that one can remain free from false pride and develop real, when we say real humility. And the two things you should always remember, you should always remember the holy name, and you should always remember that at any moment, this body could end. <laughs> In other words, 
keep the idea of the temporary nature of this material world forefront. And that way one will act according to the most important thing in their life at every moment. Okay? Thank you. I really like those points. Thank you for reminding me. Yes. Point, the point of controversy is that if it's full relief program distributing Krishna Prashadam and philanthropic service, so-called service, maybe it's good for the human society, but Prabhupada emphasized the more important thing is to give Krishna consciousness. Yeah. Not try to, it's like to put perfume in the stool. This material world is like that. So we see yeah. many another mission like Ramakrishna mission, many hospitals and like that. But real service is to give Krishna consciousness to the people. Yeah, that's the most important. A devotee, that's what it means to be a devotee. Devotee means to give Krishna consciousness or to give their association in such a way that people are inspired for Krishna consciousness. Okay, last question. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. But are we trying to say that we should see people uh, starving and dying and just go and chant Hare Krishna? Would uh, they, how would they re react? I mean... No, we, we, we should we should shouldn't we be a little bit more conscious of certain We have our programs, like giving, right? Giving Krishna consciousness is also maybe uh, helping people to to, to elevate their uh, their self and, and take conscious of certain things. But the person we in give, a real disaster, he just wants. We give Krishna prasad. That's giving Krishna consciousness, isn't it? <laughs> Krishna Krishna prasad is none different than Krishna. That's right. <laughs> so if we're, if we're giving ordinary food, that's something. That may not be very beneficial, but if we give Krishna prasadam, that's preaching. That's right, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you. You'd like me, Moni. Would you like to add one more thing? As everybody is? Yeah. Saintly person is compassionate. It reminded me of that one incident where Prabhupada, I think it was in Vrindavan, and he saw the, the young children fighting with the dogs. It was here? This was in, in Mayapur. He was fighting with the dogs for some food. Uh, a tear came to Prabhupada's ma uh, uh, eye, and his heart was moved. He said, we should begin pr prashadam distribution here. So a devotee doesn't like to see anyone suffer. And we can relieve their suffering in whatever way we can. That is nice. Because actually, even if you do some material welfare for some relief someone's suffering, you know, that may inspire that person to take up Krishna consciousness because you're a devotee. So you can never understand when you help another person how it will manifest in their life. Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.